Okay, hello everyone. So this is the second part of our bounding probabilities. So the idea is we have a distribution. We don't know what the distribution is, but we can measure things like the mean and variance and we want to get not the exact probability, but at least a bound on the probability. So the one we're going to do now is we're going to go to the Markov's inequality. So let's set up. So first of all, we've got our y. It's a random variable and it takes only non-negative values. Okay, and we're going to consider a constant a which is greater than zero. I will ask the question, can we work out the probability that y is going to be greater than or equal to a? And yes, that will always be less than or equal to the expected value of y over a. And so it makes sense. If the expected value is small, then you can't expect large values for your random variable. So what we'll do first of all is we will prove this. So let's go to our notes and let's think about the proof. So first of all, let's do some setup. The first thing to notice is we start with the left and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write this as a definition. So here's our definition of expected value. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this into two bits. This summation, I'm gonna split it into basically everything up to a minus one, and then everything from a to n. So let's think about this left-hand turn. So this term here, first of all, the y can take values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to a minus 1. So this is positive. We know that this is going to be 0 or positive. So this whole term, when we add up a load of things, is going to be positive. So let's think about the logic. I've got something, I don't know what it is, but it's positive, which is the green box, plus something else. So that is always going to be greater or equal to just that something else. Does that make sense? I've got, I know that this is going to be either zero at the best case scenario. So then this whole thing would be equal to this um, term here. But if this is basically greater than zero, then I don't know what this is exactly, but I know it must be greater than this bit. This is a common trick. I'm surprised it's not become a Gary Glonick trick where you split a summation into two bits of both non-negative and then you can get a greater than. So let's continue on with our proof. We've got this amount here. And then think about this y here. What values can this y take? It can be a, then a plus one, a plus two, all the way up to n. And in fact, this y is always going to be a plus something. So I can replace that and say, this whole thing is greater than the lowest possible value of y, which is a. Nice thing is a is now a constant before y was part of the y was part of the summation, so I couldn't bring it out the front. But now I've got a, which is a constant, I can bring it out the front. And the way I've dealt with it is y changed, but y was always greater than or equal to a, so I just replaced it with a, and I have this greater than. So now we've got that, we will bring our a out the front. And now what we've got here, we've got a times the summation as y goes from a to n, the probability y, which is just the probability y is greater than or equal to a. So let's put that all together. We started with the expected value of y, and we've done a series of steps where we had some equalities and then some greater than, some greater than. So in the end, we finally got to this. So that must mean that that is greater than or equal to a the probability that y is greater than or equal to a. So now we just do our rearrangement to get Markov's inequality. So let's use it. Suppose the average cost to maintain a car for a year is 1,500. What is the upper bound of probability that the cost in one year is greater than 7,500? So classic thing, I've just given you an inequality I've given you a wordy type problem. What you need to do is you need to look at that and go, how do I get the expected value of Y? How do I get A? So let's have a go. So what do we know? Well, first of all, we're told that the expected value of Y equals 
500. And just so I know, I'll, let, I'll go where y is the cost. And what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate the probability that y is greater than or equal to 7500. Well, this is my expected value. This is my a. So we know that that is going to be less than or equal to a, sorry, to the expected value, 1500, divided by a, which is 7500 which is 0.2. So even though we don't know the distribution, we know the probability that the cost is greater than 7,500 is going to be less than 0.2. I don't know the exact value, I just know it's going to be basically 20% or less. So that's our first sort of main um, inequality, our bounding probabilities. And in the next video, we'll look at another one which will also use the variance as well as the mean what we call Chevy Chev's inequality. Okay, see you later. Bye.